From what we are discussing here, I can see that with the group discussions and uh, also from the question answers, we can, uh, we can see that, uh, that you are getting the structure of the uh, Pramanvartika. Meanwhile, the content in terms of the wisdom of emptiness, this is what um, most of you are your the discussions is hovering more around that area, which is so is the indications of is an incredibly great indication of the say the uh, the virtue that you are in the proper direction. This is so good. So for that matter, the some suggestions. Number one is this this stanza. This stanza, His Holiness in public public teachings. I remember he oftentimes cites these two lines so oftentimes I reflect uh, the, and advise people, advise the public, advise the, the audience to the, they, in a way he's inspiring others uh, to uh, they think of your Dharma practice in line with these two, these two lines, these two lines, one. And then number, the next point is again in the same line, uh, 2013 when the, the I did, I did mention this to you uh, the earlier days, that early, one, early morning when his own, his own was in Delhi, his secretary called me, and then the, for the, the audience with his holiness, then the, there his son gave me a number of, say, the instructions related to Tibet House. And uh, then at one point, again, he cited the two lines, Samar Gyurva Drola, Penjabatu, Madhishi Gyurva Chasedo. And they, you can, you know, say this in Tibetan also. We deliberately put that in Tibetan in the, the book. We just put it in the, what do you call it, transliteration. Transliteration, you see that? Can you read it? What page is that? Huh? Page five. Page five, we put it just to let the people who have no access to Tibetans, Tibetan, uh, for them to get the opportunity to recite these two lines in Tibetan. Can you read it? Very good. OK, let's see. The, the Indian representative, Pavanila, you read it. I will see the sound. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Okay, Anila, on behalf of the, the, the Chinese. Very good. And then the, the Bruce Changjula. Okay, now Janet from Singapore. Yeah, Janet, read it, read it, read it, read it, yeah, Janet. Yes. Okay, now Brother Lai, representing Malaysia. A typical Tibetan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now Brother Peck, representing the Malaysians, the Vajrayana, what? Vajrayana Council. Brother Peck. Huh? Shirin. Okay, Shirin will do it. Yes, yes. Perfect, very good. All of you are you know, saying this with a very good sound. Perfect, it's so good. Why not you say this? Okay, now I'll explain the, the words. Explain meaning, the word to word meaning, very quickly. Okay, Tsema. Tsema is the reliable or the valid cognition. Tsema is the reliable or the valid cognition. Technically, it's valid cognition. Tsema. Okay, it is tsemar. Tsema is the original word. Mar is a linking word. It links, means to. To or towards. Towards, to, for. These are not only are, there are similar, there are many other, the other 
the uh, alphabets, words, which express this. Okay, Tamar means towards. Towards, transformation towards. Tamar. Tamar is the value cognition or the reliable guide, reliable one. Tamar. Turba is transformed. Turba is transformed. Do, sentient beings. La, four or two. Four or two. La. Pen. Pen is benefit. Pen is benefit. Pen. Shepa. Shepa is intent or aspired. Intent or aspired. Motivated. Motivated, intent, aspired. Tunpa, teacher. Deshek, sugata. Kyoppa, protector. Chak, cell. Chak, cell is prostrate. Lo is concluding, concluding um, the word. Okay, this is as simple as that. You can recite this in Tibetan because look, we seek his holiness as we see his holiness as a role model for our Dhamma practice. And his soul for his holiness, this is so precious. He recites this almost every day. So therefore this this word in Tibetan is something so precious. And then for you to feel it more vividly, you can recite it in English also. In English, because the meanings will be reflected very easily. But the Tibetan you have to struggle because the Tibetan is not your um, this is not what you have uh, the, you are familiar with. Okay, and gradually when you read the Tibetan, then the, if you put effort to know the word the word to word meaning, then it becomes easy. You you may reach a point whereby you don't have to recite it in English. Just the reading Tibetan is good enough for you to ref to have these reflections coming into being. Okay, this one thing, and then I personally for my practice. Okay, this is just sharing. For my practice, particularly meditation and emptiness, where say I spend like exclusively separate time, exclusively besides other meditations, mixture of bodhicitta, emptiness, sadhanas, all these things, and then exclusively separate time for emptiness meditation. Right? For that, I begin with these two lines. Begin with these two lines, then seek the Buddha as the inspiration. This is how I should grow. This is how I should grow. Semar Gurba, Dola Pen, Semar Gurba, the reliable guide. Eventually, I should be able to guide all the emotional beings. How? Dola Pen Shepa, motivated by the altruism to benefit all sentient beings. Okay, see how much I love the sentient beings. Just try, just try to let your mind flow towards all beings. Not to push anybody, but embrace everybody. What is Tumba? That the teacher of the wisdom of emptiness. Okay, they should know this wisdom of emptiness. What is this wisdom of emptiness like? Try to meditate on wisdom of emptiness in a very cursory or a, the what do you call it? In a very in a form of synopsis, in a form of summary. Uh, just quickly retrieve what this experience of emptiness is like. Quickly retrieve that. Then with this, Sugada, Dumba, Deshik, Sugada. So then, then that, uh, I imagine that, okay, this, if this experience becomes so stabilized and profound, all the afflictions, Gautami Kamas, they will all dissolve. Just imagine that you are freed of all these states. With this experience, then you can protect the beings by giving teachings. This is how I should follow. This is how I the structure my whole practice on these two lines, and then start with meditation emptiness. Okay, so it's just a sharing. <clears throat> okay, then on a daily basis, finally, the cognitive aspect of a mind should, must grow, keep growing. Cognitive aspect of a mind should keep growing. So inside this, these two lines, do you see what emphasis should we be making from, what advice do we get from these two lines? What are the areas where we need to focus on? What advice do you get from these two lines? Tell me. Huh? One is altruism. We should focus on compassion. This is so important. The other one is 
wisdom of emptiness, these two things. It's not that, okay, I'm focusing on compassion, as on compassion, everything will come. No. Compassion is very important. Wisdom of emptiness is very important. They must be worked hand in hand on a daily basis. For that matter, the co in both cases, the cognitive aspect of meditative, cognitive aspect, to improvise, to strengthen your cognitive, the activity of the mind is so important. For that matter, on a daily basis, see if we can read from this book like one page a day, if not two, three pages a day. Don't read like 20, 30 pages a day. Don't be too enthusiastic. We should be very realistic. Read one page a day, maximum two pages a day, and keep it there right next to your next to your bed, keep it there. Read one page, half a page. If you're, you're too tired to read two lines, that is your job. If nothing really is there, just read two lines, okay, my, now my job is done, then you sleep, right? So whereas if you have little energy, read half a page, one page, and make it a habit. His Holiness the Dalai reads a lot, you won't believe, okay. Oh. And then the, the, on a daily basis, I'm so happy that from the early retreats, from the early retreats, I come across some people who, are, who, who, who reported to me that since that retreat, they have been doing this Vajra Moon practice on a daily basis. This is so encouraging to hear that. It's so happy for me to hear that. So what actually the efforts that we put put in people are making sure that this these efforts don't go the in vain is so precious i'm so happy see if you can do this practice on a daily basis and then it may not be like two hours that we are doing even this virgin moon practice you can do within five minutes five minutes you can do the virgin the moon practice for example let's say the the compassion just quickly think about, say, the refuge in Bodhicitta. Then just imagine that you spread your compassion towards all beings, embrace everybody, leaving them aside, and make this comment, may I become Buddha for the benefit of all sentient beings. Hold on three times, change it into the moon disk. And quickly think about the emptiness. Four points, emptiness. The person, six elements, number two. Number one, the person. I'll explain what these are. Number one, person. Number two, six elements. Number three is space like emptiness. Number four is illusion like emptiness. Finish. Number one is person, the self or the person. Number two is six elements. Number three is space like emptiness. Number four is illusion like emptiness. If you can do this much, if you can do this much, that will suffice for the time being, that will suffice your share of the meditation and emptiness. Number one is the self. Number two is six elements. Number three is space like emptiness. Number three is, no, number four is illusion like emptiness. Okay, so what, what do you mean by these four points? Number one, okay, after the bodhicitta commitment, changing into the moon disk, then you sit upright and think of the self. Okay, I, self, number one. I. How does this I appear to you? As so solid objectified. Then you go into six elements. I'm nothing but made of the six elements. Go into six elements. Then, seeing the six elements, ask, where is this self? Which of the six elements is a self? Where is this self different from the six elements? It's not there. Stay in this experience. This is a space like emptiness. From this, then you imagine that you come out. That again the self comes back. So from the object is not there, still coming back, which means only the coming to the subject, not from the object. From the object is zero. Now it's coming, coming from the subject. Subject means it's illusion-like. How the illusion comes just from the mind, therefore even the self is also just coming from the mind, illusion-like. With this awareness, then you can change this, change this, that self is nothing like illusion. In actuality, it's just the, from the object, it's just empty. So this you change into the, the Vajra, Vajra. And then, try to share this for all sentient beings very quickly, two seconds. And then, receive the blessings for all Buddhas, Bodhisattvas very quickly. And then, become non-dual, blessed, right? And then you do the end dedication prayer, then you go for your job, go for work. Finish, it will not take even five minutes, right? Whereas we can do, do in little detail, 15 minutes, 20 minutes would be wonderful. But if, it, if nothing happens, then do it for five minutes. 
Okay. Now, what if say if this is what you you think that you're going to do? If this, if you see these two lines as a source of inspiration for you, this is how Acharya Dignaga um, saw the Buddha's biography. So Buddha is our role model. And how Acharya Dharmagirti, so fascinated by this, and so he penned like 283 stanzas to explain this. If this is how you see as a, say, the role model for you, then we have to go through this. The, the most important thing is the altruism and the teacher, the bodhicitta, the, the wisdom emptiness, these two things. So we should make sure that in our daily practice, there's something to do with these two things, actually working on these two things compassion and the wisdom of emptiness. If these two things happen, that's good. For example, everywhere in all the stanzas in this book by the great saints, for example, the first stanza that we read, do you remember? The first stanza that we read every morning. What is that stanza? Enthused by great compassion, you taught immaculate dharma to dispel all poverty views. To you, the Buddha Gautama, I pay homage. What is this? Enthused by great compassion. Look, again, compassion comes. You taught the immaculate dharma. What, what dharma did he teach? Wisdom of emptiness. To dispel the perverted views. What perverted views? Mental defilements. Again, look, we see that the essence of the teachings are coming in this stanza. This stanza was said by Aranigarjuna. So this, so wise people, they, they, once, you, once you get the feel of these two, bodhicitta, the wisdom of emptiness, once you get the feel of these two, then slowly, get away from, you know, reading too many books, no, reading, reciting too many prayers every day. Slowly get away from this, spend more time on meditation. Meditation will actually transform your mind. Whereas, when, you, when you're not too convinced, when the experience of emptiness is not there, when the bodhicitta is not really, you don't really, you know, feel it there. At that point, reading more materials, they will help us greatly. So these are all skillful means. We need to know what are the phases. What are the phases? There's always a change in phase of your life happening. Even with the spiritual journey, there's a phase. Initially, more reading, more reading, and then the interaction studies and so forth. Then as you go through this, you gain deeper conviction, reflection. You get deeper conviction. Yes, now this is the dharma. Now I got it. This is the dharma. Then you come up with the, any teacher, any great teacher you come across, you see that, okay, thinking wise, now is my, the, I'm, what I'm thinking is in a proper track, not in proper track, is really there. This is it. When you get such a, again, there's new information, again, there's a new information. No. Okay, this is new information, but the, the thinking is exactly the same. Now I got it. From this, if once you have confirmed, for example, you go to attend the teaching of His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, and what His Holiness is saying, and what you're thinking, totally squares. These two go totally in, they say, the parallel. Parallel, which means that your thinking, reflection is quite good. Now, go more, spend more time on meditation. Because you know you have ample material for meditation on emptiness. You have ample material to meditate on bodhicitta. So this now most spend, time should be spent on the meditation. This will actually transform our mind. Whereas without the materials, materials, study, reading, and so forth, you cannot really reflect. You cannot forget about meditation. Okay, we need to know the different fa different phases of our life. Then uh, at one point, some of the, some of the great practitioners, when they reach during the younger days, so much reading, then the recitation, making prayers and so forth. Then at one point, when they reach to a quite a high level, then they don't even make prostrations. The moment they wake, even if they, they sleep, they meditate emptiness. They wake up, they meditate in bodhicitta. So prostration, in order to become be receptive. Prostration means to surrender. Surrender what? Surrender so that I'm ready to listen to you, to open up the receptivity. So the receptivity of what? Bodhicitta now, not only that you, you become so receptive, you are actually there. You already got into the entrance. You already got there. So you get up and marry in Bodhicitta. So, so when, when somebody reaches a very high level, then even the recitations, they all stop. They just go into direct emptiness meditation, bodhisattva meditation, they just go there.
right? Okay, so we need to know the different phases of the life. So in the initial phase, study is so important. In the middle, reflection is so important while not compromising the study and the meditation. Then in the third phase, third phase, first, first of the third phase, first part of the third phase, emphasis should be on the meditation while not compromising studies and reflection. Then on the fourth phase, I, I don't have to tell you, you will decide. <laughs> Then you may end up, you know, either you may end up in, say, in a forest by yourself, like the great Saint Narupa, Tilopa, like this, or even if you're in a community, you see that everybody will be influenced by you, where everybody is so much into bodhicitta, wisdom, emptiness. If that happens, you have reached that level. Okay, good. Good. Then, Guide to the Bodhisattva's way of life. By Bodhisattva Shantideva, Guide to the Bodhisattva's way of life. If you can, um, go through this text as often as possible. This would be an incredible guide for us. This would be a, a lifelong guide. One, and then, even, but then, meanwhile, also think of studying the very standard text, like the way we did Pramana Vartika in seven days. Perhaps this world record. It's a world record. I don't think, you know, anybody did Pramana Vartika, half of the Pramana Vartika chapter 2 in seven days. Okay, so what I'm saying is that studying these standard books like Pramana Vartika, Achara Chandra this text, Madhimika Avatar, and then God the Bursa, Bursa Shantideva's book and so forth, you try to study these very systematic and the sophisticated texts. We never underestimate ourselves, never underestimate must go through study this. If you really, if you're very, um, the, uh, say, observant, even with the different traditions, like these, the, uh, all the traditions, Sakya, Kakyu, Nyingma, Gelu, all traditions, all traditions, the great, great masters of even Sak, the, the Nyingma and Kakyu, they are so learned. They spend so much of time in these texts, they study it. But people have a very naive impression that Kagyu and Nyingma means you don't have to study, you practice. This is very naive. Just look at the great teachers of Nyingma and, for example, say the Kagyu. Jesu Melarupa, Jesu Marpa, then go to Jesu Narupa. Who's Jesu Narupa? Jesu Narupa was the top notch scholar of Nalanda Monastic University. Scholar, top notch scholar of Nalanda University. So this is how the Kagyu tradition became so rich, because the source was so rich. Great Saint Narupa. Then Nyingma, look at the Nyingma great teachers. Great teachers, they are highly, highly learned. They spend a lot of the time in the academic studies. Their presentations are very different from who did not go into the academic presentations, academic studies. Their presentation is so rich, even the Nyingma's absorption practice, how they present, those who are very learned, their presentation is lucidly clear. Likewise, Sakya and Gilob. Okay, so therefore, the, these are things. Okay, questions? Questions? May I ask a few yes, yes. Uh, words? Yes, uh, yes. Might? Yes. For the benefit everyone. Oh. Or maybe it's just me, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> okay, page five. Mm. Um, so the, I have about six words. Yes, I yes. Hearers, I prostrate to the mothers of the hearers. Hearers, is that? Shravakas. Shravakas, okay. And subduers in the last line. Ah. Uh, the help subduers. And who through the possession of omniscience? Subduers mean the Buddhas. Help subduers. Yes, oh, helps, okay. helps yeah. the Buddhas to expound the varieties of teachings. Okay, very quickly. Um, page 8, hmm? with folded hands I beseech the Buddhas of all directions, but I've seen references to ten directions elsewhere. Hmm. So what do the ten directions mean? Four cardinal directions, okay. four cardinal, cardinal directions, yeah. and the four intermediate directions, okay. up and down. Okay, okay. Then, um, very quickly. Page 15, mm. a star, a visual aberration, a flame of a lamp, an mm. illusion. Ah. See condition things as such. Ah. So I could, I could understand the others, but not the metaphor of star. Okay, star, this is a very important metaphor. Star, 
just as the stars are visible only in the night. Mm -hmm. Night is the metaphor for ignorance. Stars are the metaphor for the conventional truths. Only, in igno only with ign self-grasping ignorance, then our mind projects the conventional truth. In darkness, only in dark you see the stars. That when you wake up, the dream dissolves. That when you wake up, with respect to your mind, all these stars dissolve in the daytime. Then the drop of dew, likewise? Drop of dew is the dew on the grass. This is an example of impermanence, not emptiness. Yeah, yeah, okay. Then... Uh, It's a very basic one, I guess, but wish fulfilling gem, I, I don't know. Wish fulfilling gem, I, uh, today, whether it exists or not, I don't know, but it is believed that in the olden times there are some gems where you say prayers, or may, I illness, may my illness go away, the prayers answered, your wishes are being fulfilled. Okay. And uh, page 40, uh, mm. stanza 12. Yes. By practicing with great energy, never giving up the four sessions. Four sessions in a day, you have to practice four times. Okay. And the last one, 44. Like the Muslims, they do five times. <laughs> <laughs> so the Buddhists, you do four times. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 44. Therefore, sentient beings resemble dreams. Upon analysis, they are like plantain trees. Again, I didn't understand the metaphor. Plantain trees? From outside, it, see, it seems as though like very strong. You cut it, inside is hollow. From outside, things look so elegant there. You go into this, it's just a bunch of atoms, nothing really from the object there as them. That elegant object, elegant simply dissolves. OK, any more questions? Yes, man. Yeah, so question lines is something that came out from the group discussion. Uh, with respect to page 21 of the text. Yes. Yeah. So the reference 46 has this uh, outline that says rejecting the mind to be a characteristic of the body and simultaneous dependent of body. So by the description of the mind to be a characteristic of the body, we understand that this means that the mind is one entity with the body. Okay. Because the mind is the characteristic and the body is the characterized. Very good. Then um, in verse 66a, it seems like the opponents are saying that the mind and body are substantially different. Mm. So we'd like to clarify whether their standpoint is that the mind and body are one entity or distinct entity. Then um, a related question to the next verse is that the argument is that if the first moment of the body gives rise to the first moment of the mind, then the mind will abide uh, unless there's a factor that causes it to disintegrate. So does that mean that the opponent is assuming that the body is permanent? Exactly. Okay, thanks. Okay, the first question is very good. In fact, that really the, uh, the helped me also to think of how to, you know, make things easy. It says, rejecting the mind to be the characteristic. Okay, so uh, the, what is important for us is, is be a good, good, be a good listener. Meaning that how we understood characterize, characteristic from what we've learned is always like the same entity. But how the opponents they present characterize, characteristic may not necessarily be same same, what do you call it? Same entities, right? For example, uh, let's say the flower and the rose flower. These two are same entity or different entities. Flower and the rose flower. We will say same. And, from, and then we, it's not just a blind faith that we follow somebody. We know what does it mean by same entity. We know that. So because we have a very clear cut understanding and we can we can really convince somebody that this same entity means this and this applicable to this, right? But for the opponents, because why for us is easy is, why for us these things become very easy is because, because of the concept of introduction of the, that things can exist not necessarily from the substance. 
thing can, things can exist from the subject by imputation. Because this concept it is introduced, the explanation of many of the, the phenomena become very easy for us. Whereas the complication arises when you believe that things exist, it should necessarily be always substantial, from the substance. Then the complications arise, you end up in lots of contradiction. For example, in the simple contradiction that came to us was, for example, what is in my hand? What's the answer? Nothing is there. Then I say the flower is there. Yes, no. Okay, let's say, flower is there? No. Now the flower is there? Yes. How many things are there? One. What is that thing? Flower. Color of the flowers, they are not. Yes. Color of the flower and flower, are these two one or different? Same. <laughs> one or different. Color of the flower and flower, one or different. One or different. If it's a one, the shape of the flower and the flower, these two are one or different. Huh? Your right hand and your body is one or different. Your right hand and your body, one hand, one or different. Your left hand and your body, one or different? If you say your right hand and your body is one, then your left hand and your body is also one. We say your right hand and left hand needs to be one. Right? So therefore they should be different. But if you say color of the flower and the flower, these two are different, different, then, the, then there should be two things. If you say two things, again this complication, if you say two things, there should be, should be two substances there. Two substances means two entities, there's only one entity. Right? These contradictions are there because they could not, they could not posit the concept of things existing by the power of the mind. So whereas Vaibhashika, Buddhist school, the lowest Buddhist school, okay, they talk more about substance or every time, like how the ordinary person or how the non-Buddhist schools, they present things should have substance. From Sautantra school, then the introduction of the conceptual phenomenon that is introduced. That is so, so helpful. That resolves many of the problems, many of the contradictions. So now, the opponents who reject the rebirth, for them, existence means a substantial existence. For them, characterized and the characteristic, they may not be of the same entity. They they may not be, because they don't know how to posit one, one entity and different isolates. They have no concept of that. So for them, when they say that the, the characterizing character means two things, means two entities. Okay, any more questions? Yes, the Ian, Mike. Uh, I think I just go back to the... the uh, all right, about the impermanent phenomena, such as a flower, it actually appear but not object. No, it is appear but not object of appearance. What does it mean by it's appear but not object of appearance? Okay, okay, for this we have to make it very clear. Object of appearance and object of? Object of appearance and object of apprehension. Object of appearance and object of appearance. No, object of appearance and object of apprehension with respect to the, with respect to the sense consciousnesses. Okay, let me put it like this. Object of appearance and object of apprehension with respect to the direct consciousnesses such as sense consciousnesses. One, object of appearance and object of apprehension with respect to the conceptual mind. Two, there are two. So when we said the flower, is the, it appears to the mind, but it, it is not the object of appearance. It appears to the mind. Which mind? Not all minds. For the sensory consciousness, for the sensory consciousness, what appears and object of appearance, these two are the same. For the sensory consciousness, what appears and the object of appearance, these two are the same. For the conceptual mind, what appears and the object of appearance may not be the same. These two are not the same. These two are not the same, right? Okay, for the conceptual mind, say, first you look at the flower. Then you close the eyes, you think of the flower. Now it is operating on the conceptual level. Conceptual level, for the conceptual level, the flower appears. But that flower is not the object of appearance. It appears, but it's not the object of appearance. Okay, you may be wondering, what then, 
Or did you get it? For the conceptual mind, the flower appears, but it is not the object of appearance. Okay, why it is not object of appearance if it appears? This next question. Is this your question? Okay. Anybody? The flower appears to the, the conceptual mind, but the flower is not the object of appearance. Why it is not? If it appears, why it is not object of appearance? Huh? Uh? Is it because without substance? Oh, say it again. Is it because when the image appear, it is without substance, so it's actually a generic image? It's so image. so why why if that is the case, then why the flower is not object of appearance? Why not? Anyone? 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 Nalini Master's course. Hey, where are you? Nalini Master's course. Okay, Janet. Is it because like my glasses is very blur, then I can't, for example here, I can't see the object, the flower clearly. So then the, maybe I see is something like um, some shape because my glasses are very blur. Let's say there's mist there. So then it be, I can't see the object of appearance. Why not? Mm, because you, of the, the object medium. appears, right? Yeah, but the flower does appear. Um, the flower do appear, but because my um, blurriness is there, but it appears. So the object appearance may be blurry. It is still the object appearance, but a blurry object appearance. Is this what you say? Um, because but the answer is it is not the object of appearance in the first place. Oh, then although yeah, right? Because of my sense power, the 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 eyes. Eye sensors having some um, defects there. Okay, I can see that. You know, the say, what you are saying is you are saying something the substantial, something powerful there. I can see that, but it has to be resolved. Anybody? Oh yes, which end? I think it's because the conceptual mind is an eliminated, uh, eliminative engager that selects. A particular aspect of the object, and it's this, therefore so the it flower. Selects, it selects the it selects the flower, mm. right? It selects the flower. It's it, it, selective. It engages by the process of in elimination. It, 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 it eliminates other things. It selects the flower. Yes. Therefore, the object. Of so therefore, the flower is the appearance of your appearance. It is unable okay. to. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now let's see what man. <laughs> okay, now <laughs> the, the final <laughs> captain. <laughs> no, it's just a funny thought. It's because you say um, the conceptual mind, both the flower and the generic image of the flower, flower appears. Yes. Can we say that it's the generic image of the flower that blocks the appearance of the flower? No, the flower appears. It doesn't block. If the flower appears, we said it. This is the basic premise. The flower appears, but it's not an object of appearance. Why it is not an object of appearance? Okay. Uh, there, Taishan, the Jaishan. Kishan, I think you mentioned before. I'm not very sure if it's right. You said, uh, you said that if, let's say, uh, the object of apprehension is actually the object of appearance. Then when I think of the flower, the flower must come. I don't know mind. what happens. Young people, they speak very fast. <laughs> <laughs> I must be speaking like this when I was young. <laughs> sorry, yes, tell sorry. me. So you said, um, uh, if let's say the object of uh, apprehension is the object of appearance, then when I think of the flower, the actual flower must come to my mind. But that's not okay, the case. Okay, that's amazing. Wonderful. Okay, answer is there. What Jason said, answer is there. Okay, did you get the answer? Okay, anybody? Answer is there. What Jason said, this answer. Hmm? Okay, let's be very quick. It's already, well now it's already 6.30 sharp. Okay, so the answer Jason is given is that object, when the object appears to you in its full form, that is the meaning of the object of appearance. Object appears in the full form. Same, the flower here, 
when you look when you look at this flower through your eyes, object in its full form comes to your eyes. Whereas, as then now look what Jason said, what Vichan said, quite similar. So whereas when you when you mind mind things about the flower. Okay. Okay, all of you, you have this book, very quick. You have this book, The Blaze non Rule World Jesus. Okay. Just the front cover, keep it in front, don't look at it. Okay. Then I will ask you to look at it for two seconds. And then again, the disconnect. Okay, start. Two seconds, finish. Okay, don't look at it now. Tell me what is written there. Tell me what is written there on the cover. Where do you find the cover? Blaze of non dual Bodhicitas. What else? Don't look at it. Anybody, don't look at it. What else? Huh? Buddha image. Cover, of course. Okay. Now look, your conceptual mind is picking up, is selecting, is selecting things. Buddha image you have selected. Your conceptual mind. Buddha image you have selected. Then the blaze non bodhu is that you have selected. Then the brown color you have selected. But you have, you have deleted many things. You have eliminated many things. The dedicated to the long life of your soul and Dalama is deleted. <laughs> then the Tibet House logo is deleted. <laughs> Tibet House Culture Center of His Soul and Dalama is deleted. Conceptual mind, it operates by eliminating things and picking up only one, one part at a time. Right? So therefore, although the object, to your eyes, everything appeared. To your eyes, everything appeared in its true form. But to your conceptual mind, the object, the book, in its true form, full form, complete form, did not come to your mind. It came to your mind through selecting. The reality is not the selection. The reality is full. So the, the, the real form of the book did not come to your mind. Therefore, that is not the object of appearance. Object of appearance is the object when it appears to you in the full form. The book in its full form, whatever is written there on the, the written details, there must appear to you. So it, things appear to you through selection. But this is not the reality. Reality is the full form. So whatever comes to your mind, conceptual mind, be it conceptual or be it sensory, whatever comes to your mind in a in a full form, that is the object of appearance. Whereas the full form is not coming, then it's not object of appearance. Yes, we can. Uh, so, so when something appears, is that equivalent to the the mental aspect, the nampa? Appears, yes. Appears to the mind, conceptual or sensory, yes. Nampa, yes, man. So then in this case, you're saying that um, the generic image of the flower is the full form? Uh, okay, this is a good question. Good question. Now, generic image of the flower, this man's question is very good. Generic image of the flower, is that the object of appearance of the conceptual mind? Answer is yes. Now, is that the full form? Answer is yes. Generic image, there's no substance there. What comes to your mind, that's the full form. So therefore, that is the object of appearance. Very good question. Okay, now from this, some of you may be a little lost. Don't worry. This is all mostly because of the early retreats, master's course, diploma course. From there, there's a coming, right? Which means that those who are a little lost, they're in a way, they're telling you to do master's course and diploma course. <laughs> right? This is more like this. Yes, okay, Brother Lai. Uh, related to that, our group actually have a, a question, I think, maybe developing from here. Uh, we are actually, uh, now that we say that the, the mind, the conceptual mind uh, eliminates, yeah? Yes. And yes. then we actually link somebody from our groups, it was actually suggesting that of our, these are uh, five omnipresent mental factors. factors. Yes. Which one of them is actually the one that's eliminating Oh, that's this interesting. <laughs> that's very interesting. So which of the five mental, the omnipresent mental factors is operating to eliminate, the, to do the work of elimination? Okay, so keep this in mind that 
okay, in a family, say there's a fa family business. There's a family business, right? So the, let's say the, the, let's say the mother is taking care of the, mother is taking care of the what? Taking care of the marketing. The father is taking care of the manufacture, manufacturing. And the son is taking care of what? Designing. The daughter is taking care of huh? finance, right? Okay, so this is just the labels given because for the company to be registered to the government, all this, the, the, what do you call it? This position should be filled up, right? Who is the CEO? Who is the, the finance? Who is this? You have to have all these things. But when you actually go to the job, the, the mother is not only doing the, what, what did I say? Marketing, she's also doing the designing. She's also doing everything. A father's doing everything, son is doing everything, daughter's doing everything. Right? In other words, all these five omnipresent mental factors, while they're assigned with different responsibilities, they are not distinct entities. They are not distinct and it's just one mind with different functions. Same mind is is having the five functions. Same mind is having the five functions. It's not that there are five different smaller minds. Right? Listening to the bigger mind? No. The same mind is, is functioning in these five ways. Same mind. And on the basis of these, on the basis of these functions, we just arbitrarily give the label, give the label, uh, say the metal factors, in order not to mix the functions. Actually, it's the same mind which operates all the five functions. Likewise, the same mind, same conceptual mind, all the five metal factors, they do the job of elimination. It's not, there's no specific mind to say that it does the, elimin the eliminating job. All the five are doing that. Yeah. Very good question. Thank you. CJ? Thank you, Kishila. I'm asking a question on behalf of Group 3. So it's also related to, slowly, the, slowly. to the conceptual mind. Uh, recall that we did the um, meditation on um, identifying the mental consciousness, where we say that some of us see the screen this color and that color. And then um, what, what our question is, if we are to imagine a sound or a smell or a taste, but does that come to us on this screen or this glass of the mental consciousness? Okay, good. And also second, following up on this question, how does the generic image apply to sound and smell? And, I'm uh, sorry? Thoughts and, and concepts. How is the generic image of sound and smell? Concepts. No, no, no. Say it again. Say it again. Man. Concepts. Say it again. Say it again. George, George just said a comment. Put full sentence. What's the full sentence? So, so if, if a thought comes up in my mind that yeah. I want to go and eat durian, yes. so it's a conceptual mind, but... Durian is fine. This is uh, but this related to the visual. Ah, okay. The smell of the durian. Okay, I yeah. want to I go like to the, smell the durian. I like the smell of the durian. Nobody likes it. <laughs> <laughs> Less the smell of perfume. Then, then how does it... Taste of... Uh, okay, what, okay, what is yeah. this generic image? Okay. Yeah. And, and what screen does it appear on? How does it... What, what appears on this screen with this thought? <laughs> Very good, okay. Wow. I thought that nobody likes the durian smell. You know, all the shops, they said no durian inside. The reason is not because of the taste, because of the smell. And there's one person who likes durian smell. Okay, so what, I'm, what is happening is that usually of the, all, of the five senses, of the five senses, for us, which is so, so dominating is the visual. Visual is so dominating. For the visual, you are not complaining. You are not asking, right? Okay, visual is a flower. Yes, generic image of flower comes. That's very easy because it's so dominating. Now the smell, okay, this is actually another very interesting thing, no, thing that I noticed. Visual is very easy. To have the memory of the visual is very easy. To have the memory of the smell to have the memory of taste, to have the memory of the tactility, this is much more difficult. To really have the memory of that. 
right? Okay, we can say that, oh, the smell is not good. So what exactly is that smell? The memory doesn't come. Just very, very generally, it's not a good smell. Oh no, Durin, don't bring it. Right? Although you're not spending it now, only the memory is coming. That memory is much, much more vague than the memory of the visual Durin. Right? Visual is so powerful for us. Whereas if your eyes, um, if, you, if you don't operate your eyes, if you have eye problems, your eyes are not working, in other words, blind, then the other senses become very sharp. For them, because the eyes are not operating, still their mind is very active and sharp, the other senses are extremely sharp, extremely sharp. Right? So therefore, the thing is to remember, try this. This is what I tried many times. I, I don't remember when I was a child, or when I was in my early 20s, I tried this. Same, uh, even, oh, one thing that I, it was so obvious was the three kinds of peppers. Green pepper, then red pepper, and gray, wow. <laughs> Yellow pepper, right? Three peppers. Green pepper, it affects my, the stomach. Red and yellow do not. So I was so curious, what's the difference? I taste the green. Okay, this is a taste, okay. Then I taste the red. They're slightly different, I forgot the green taste. I tried to retrieve, in what way this different, I cannot. Memory of the green taste, the real taste is not coming. And then I pick up the yellow. Again, yellow is slightly different from the red and the green. When I taste it, when it is still in my mouth, then the, this taste, the memory, I can see, I can feel it. Yes, this is a unique taste. Then I think of the red and the green is not coming. So I cannot compare. I can say that this is not same. In what way not same? This is like this, this is like this, I cannot say this. The moment I don't have it in my, I don't have it with my the, the, the tasting it now, this memory, sharpness memory disappears. This is what I noticed. I tried it so many times. Even with the taste of the sesame, I tried. Sesame taste is very unique. I taste it, oh, it's, this is the taste. And I remove it, I think of the taste, it's not coming to me again. Again, I try to taste this. So the visual is very prominent, very dominating. Other memories are so vague. We can at the most say that, oh, this is good or bad, that's it. Yeah, okay, do it yourself. This is not something you have to believe in me. Try it yourself, how difficult it is to really feel that taste. So the genetic image is formed. Tell me, in your dream, in your dream, how many of you have, you had the, the dream of the, the visual objects? How many of you had that dream? All of us. How many of you have the dream of tasting something, real taste? Wow, it's a delicious taste. It's not really delicious. How many of you had this? One, are you sure? You should be very sharp in it. You don't think, you don't simply think that, okay, it came to me, right? This is so rare, right? This is so rare. Why I'm saying this is that it requires a very sharp observe the, ob the observation skill. I guess it's activity you're involved in a lot. Which senses you use most? Like we do a lot of cooking at home. So right now I was imagining all the smells I, and taste. It comes to me because we do a lot of cooking. I guess other people would use their senses in a different way. People who hear a lot, who play a lot of music would be very attuned to uh, the sense of... The food, the food, not only cooking, food we all have been experiencing every day, yes, no. Still, I don't remember the taste of the food. Every day, for the last 50 years, every day, minimum three, day, three times a day, I've been eating food. Still, I don't remember the taste. For this, I'm, what I'm saying is that this is, the, the, this is what we have to be acutely sharp. Just see, try to distinguish the taste. Don't just say, yes, there's a difference. I know there's a difference. 
just by as well as you're seeing, trying to distinguish the taste of the green pepper and the yellow pepper and the red pepper. If you can distinguish in the memory, that is amazing. Don't just say that, yes, there's a difference. I, still, I know there's a difference. If somebody asks me what exactly is the green pepper taste, I cannot really explain this. Not because that, oh, taste the chocolate, not like this. I cannot really retrieve what exactly is the memory, that genetic image is not coming. Right? It's just a very general genetic image comes. Yes, okay, this, these three are different. But in what way different? Still it is not coming. So that I attempted. I just tested it, how mind works. I was really working on that. Just work on, be very observant. Right? It's not that. Whereas if your eyes are really blind, then there's no choice other than, you know, automatically the, all the other senses, they become very powerful. Then, the, as what Pavanila said, the other senses, a print will be, le will be left there. Because at the moment, our eyesight, the sight, visual, is so dominating, most imprints are by the eyesight. Right? Because, okay, let's say, because, say, all of us, small children, everybody, we are so keen on video. What is video? In the video, visual is there, no sound. No, sound is there, no taste, no smell, right? Food, very delicious food, no, no taste, no smell, right? And yet we are so happy with this. Okay, I watched a movie. We never complain that there's no real smell coming. We never complained. But if the sound is not coming, we complain. The sound is not good. If the visual is not good, we say, I paid so, so much, and there's no, the visual is not, is bad. But with a smile, even there's no smell at all, still you don't complain. This is how we are so addicted to the, so dominated by the visual. Okay. So I'm, I'm just trying to imagine, like, if you hear the, the sound of a bell or the firecrackers, then, then what is the generic sound that is comes easy. to your mind? Yeah. Sound is easy. Okay. 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 Do you remember this sound? That's the generic image. You, ne you may not be able to articulate this. Do you remember that you have heard a sound? And even what the sound is, this like a ding? Is this a sound? Hey, man, you are saying yes. What this sound? Is this like a ding? No, what does that sound like? Tick, 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 right? So you can distinguish this. That is the generic image of the sound. Yes, OK. okay. I have two questions, Gishina. Yes. One is, is there a good uh, English commentary on this text that you can recommend? Which one? This. Yeah. Pramana Vartika. Yeah. I commentary? said it, only one commentary. Only one commentary in English, uh -huh. they translate into English. And I learned that it's not a good the accuracy is not there. Okay. Okay. So I cannot really okay. recommend. Okay. Second question. I feel like to develop Buddhist, you need to develop renunciation. And uh, one of the ways is to develop uh, uh, a realization of subtle impermanence, as you have said. So how does one actually uh, meditate on subtle impermanence? Is there a book to recommend and what is procedure and all that? I say it again, a meditation on the subtle impermanence is there a book? Yeah, is there a, a text, a way to follow? Yeah. Okay, that? so basically, um, okay, what I would say is that even what is available now, the materials, very rich materials. At the time of the Buddha, these materials were not available. Then at the time of Ashwari Dharmakirti, many of the materials which are so lucidly explained now, they were not available on this, those days. So what we do is, the, if possible, where the materials are available, make use of these materials. Where not available, um, you try to meet with teachers who actually practice who you should practice and ask them, how, how should I do that? I cannot the, do the, the meditation subtle impermanence. So, and so this time we did not do this subtle impermanence. We did not really do it. But usually during the, the, uh, the Bodhicitta retreat, Bodhicitta retreats, we do that. We do that. 
certain uh, impermanence, how would you go about doing this? Is using your intelligence. How? Let's see. The, the change. Change that is happening over, say, the, okay, let's say, let's usually what example that I give is that day one we are here, we plant a, say, Bodhi tree. That's the memory of our coming together. Otherwise, no tree there. In that place, we plant a tree, plant a seed. Then after 10 years, we come together. And we see that there's a huge tree there. Kim, don't you remember that there's, there was no tree before? You said, no tree, yeah, no tree. There's a huge tree, there's a surprise. Surprise means the gross impermanence. What was not there, then after 10 years, we see this huge tree, gross impermanence. So this tree, like 10 feet tall tree, this tree, tree did not wait for nine years and 11 months, saying that, okay, oh, next year, next day is completion, 10 years, I should pop up, right? 10, the overnight, 10 feet, no. Every year growing one foot. Every year one foot, one foot, one foot, this is a fact. Now, the first, the first year is only one foot tall. Even that, it's not that 11 years, for 11 months, it remained dormant. And so, oh, tomorrow, I forgot, tomorrow is complete, it's complete one year, I have to have one foot. No, every month is one inch, one inch, one inch, one inch. Again, the first month is one inch. First month, it is 30 days. Again, one thirtieth of an inch one day, another one thirtieth inch another day. This is what you have to work. You have to, how your mind should work. These are instructions, instructions. You have to work on that. And then you have to make it subtler from one month, make it one day. One day, make it one hour. One hour, make it one minute. One minute, make it one second. One second means one minute, do you see the, the minute hand mo moving? You don't see that. But the second hand moving, do you see that? Yes, tick, 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 okay. This is how everything's moving, tick, tick, tick. Now, even one second is made of 1,000 milliseconds. 1,000 milliseconds is not like tick, tick, tick. It's not like that. It's so fast. Even your eyes can catch it. So fast. This is how the reality, everything is moving. All the composite phenomena, they're moving like this. So this is what we have to rationally think. Rationally think very seriously. Never ever in the meditation, and these are all analytical meditation, including meditation emptiness. Never ever just draw a rash conclusion. Of course, yeah, the, the none of the six elements that the, the person know, that's true, right? You don't have to go through each of the element. If you do like this, you will never get emptiness. Experience-wise, you will never get there. So each of them, you have to go very systematically. You know that the element of earth is not the self, but still you have to go. Element of earth is, not, element of earth is like this. Myself is like this. Of course, it's not this cell. And then go through each, if possible, each of the, even the element of earth. The way we go, the skin, the fatty tissues. Just take your time. No shortcuts. Take your time. This is known as analytical meditation, where you don't sit in one position. Where you don't just sit in the meditation at one point. You just keep changing with the rationality, with the controlled reflection. And then the, it's a cumulative effect. Cumulatively, you, wow, it's amazing. There's no self really there from the object side. That would come to us gradually. Likewise, impermanence, instruction, instruction. So the way I'm explaining now, this is the instruction, right? Besides this, you will never find subtle impermanence instruction. So this is how we go. We reduce it. We, make, re, we reduce it from the grosser to a subtler, Subtler, try to let your mind feel it. When it comes to subtle, like the, the what do you call it, uh, millisecond level. On that level, if you cannot visualize this, don't want to use your mobile. Use the mobile and look at the, the timer. Press it and see. The visual is so powerful. This visual, see, it moves so fast. Okay, those of you who have the mobile, just click it right now. The timer, just press the timer or the timer or the stopwatch and see how fast it works. Sean, is it working so fast or slow? Huh? Uh, fast, I can't huh? hear myself. 
It's working faster. Yeah. This is, we know, not even without looking at it, you know that it will move, move so fast. But the conviction, the deep conviction is not coming. You look at it, then the seeing is believing. It's very powerful in your mind. So with this, you apply this to your mind. This is how our body moves. This is how our mind moves. This is how this hall is moving. This is how the whole world is moving so fast. And then it will be then, you reflect on this. Just keep thinking about this. Think about it very seriously. Think about it very seriously. And all, at the same time, accumulation of merit is also required. Accumulation of merit is also required to support that. Otherwise, if the accumulation of merit is not there, thinking this, this can make you crazy because it's so overwhelming experience. It can make you crazy without support of merit. That is required. Yeah. So then you will see that, that everything is moving so fast. You look at the walls, everything moves so fast. Very scary. And then the, if the support of merit is not there, then the person will prefer not to meditate. Whereas if the support of merit is there, person will not switch to the not meditating. We say, whether I merit, not merit, this is the reality, I cannot escape. Right? And then, well, how can I escape from this? By meditating emptiness. Right? So this will connect to the emptiness. Many people, when the merit is not there, they will stop doing the practice. Instead of going to emptiness, they will stop the practice altogether. So this is where we need the support of the merit. Okay, any, yes, the Lian Chu, um, okay, Moi. Um, um, okay, I'm just referring to the text, right? Page 39, um, verse 141. Page to number. Page 39. Page 39, yes. Um, verse 141. Yes. To be. So when Kishila explained about the defilement of the Sugata, I noticed that you are taking no, the from. Sugata the Sugata doesn't have defilement. Cessation of all defilements of the Sugata. Cessation, yes. Yeah. Sorry. Sugata does not have defilements. Yeah. Cessation Cess of defilements is there with the Sugata. Sorry, cessation of all defilements. You explain to, from what I understand, from the perspective of the higher school, um, whereas I thought um, this text is based on the Sutra, South Tantrika, also, um, if I can recall correctly, from the South Tantrika um, point of view, in fact, the Sukata's body is contaminated. So that's a contradiction. The Sugata is not the body. Sugata is the mental quality. The mental continuum. So, so the South Tantrika, when they speak about the, the say the okay, so the Buddha, Buddha's body, Buddha's body. The lower schools, Vaibhashika and South Tantra, they say the Buddha's body is the remnant from the, the, the previous samsaric body. So that is contaminated. But the mind is uncontaminated. The Sugata is the experience of the mind. It's nothing to do with the body. So also for the South Tantrika, if I can remember correctly, um, once the body of that person who has achieved in his mind, Buddhahood, once his body sees his mental continent also. Okay, that is the unique presentation. So we are learning the main framework of the, the framework of how the Dharma works on the basis of the Paramana Vartika and the actual content from Prasangika. Uh, okay. Right? Thank you. Yeah. Otherwise it can be the, it can be greatly confusing. Okay, Lian Chu. Thank you, Gishila. First, I, I would like to say that um, I'm a great beneficiary of all your guidance and teaching from last year's Bodhicitta retreat, and it's helped me a lot to be able to practice in a much more fruitful, meaningful, and productive way. But this retreat has a lot more terminology, which requires me to be a bit more um, specific uh, in order to be able to understand what I read uh, later on. So following from Man's earlier topic that she raised and throughout our many group discussions, I would like to be quite clear. When you say to us, 
in the beginning of the practice, first visualize Shakyamuni, Buddha, and then all the other teachers. Yeah, teachers and everything. Is that visualization um, to be classified under objects of apprehension from our mind? Or in or the occasion you. in the occasion where somebody is actually seeing a picture of a statue or the painting at TBC or Shakyamuni, would that be then a generic image? I mean classified as Okay, so basically what we do is and that Okay, visualize Buddha Shakyamuni. There are so many ways of Buddha Shakyamuni visualization. You remember the Tanga? You just visualize the Tanga. Okay. And then in some cases, you saw the, the statue or the statue of the Buddha Shakyamuni. Okay. Then in some cases, body, what if it's the body? It doesn't matter. Buddha Shakyamuni's mind, which is omniscient, which is so perfected love. Perfect knowledge and perfect power. Visualize that, right? So all these forms are there. All are beneficial. Meanwhile, the final one that the, the, the Buddha Shakyamuni in the form of the Buddha's metal qualities, that is the most excellent way of visualization. One. Then in our case, be it the Tanga, be it the statue, be it the Buddha's qualities, or you can go back in time 2,500 years ago, the Inrajgir mountain, the, the peak where the Buddha Shakyamuni was attending the Heart Sutra. You can visualize that, go back in time, right? It actually happened. It actually happened there. So if you're able to go to that, if you're able to go to that, distance in time and space. Then, that visualization, not like a tanga, really somebody's there presiding over, somebody's there blessing Shariputra to ask questions, somebody there who really approved the answer given by Aravadukiteshvara. So there you are having the, say the, the Buddha Shakyamuni is coming to your mind. And yet, it is a genetic, because it is a conceptual mind, a genetic image is formed. So, your mind apprehend the Buddha Shakyamuni appears to your mind. Buddha Shakyamuni's genetic image appears to your mind. Both of the two, Buddha Shakyamuni was the object apprehension of your mind, and not the generic image of the Buddha Shakyamuni. But the Buddha, generic image of Buddha Shakyamuni is the object appearance, not the, the object apprehension. Yes. Okay, sharing. Uh, Gashila, uh, page 139, yes. verse 30, on the, uh, uh, this is, this is the 37 practices of a Bodhisattva. Yes, yes. So on verse 30, uh, the practice of the first five perfections, but without wisdom, cannot achieve perfect enlightenment. Equipped with skillful means and cultivating the wisdom of non-conceptualizing the three spheres. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit on that? The whole or three spheres? Just the three spheres. Okay, three spheres. This is a good question. So when we engage in any kind of practice, the practice of the generosity, the practice of ethics, practice of patience, practice of enthusiasm, or talking to somebody, talking to somebody, any action that one engages, engages in, uh, the, there are three spheres. Three spheres meaning the agent, agent, then the object, and the action. Agent, object, and the action. For example, say, generosity. You as the benefactor, and the other person as the beneficiary, and the act of benefiting. You are the agent, the benefactor, the benefactor as the agent, and the beneficiary as the object, and the act of benefiting as the action which connects the two. These are the three spheres. And then in some cases, so on top of these three, then the what material, material that you are generous of, material that you give, that is also include making it four. But three spheres meaning agent, object, and the action. Yeah. 
Okay, any more questions? Any more questions? Okay, yes, Janet. Um, I want to ask on page 36, stanza 133. Okay, again, Janet, you are very young. You're speaking very fast. Okay, um, true scriptures and... No, 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 which page? 36. Page 36, yes. Then? Stanza 133. One? 33. 133, 30. yes, yes. Um, true scriptures and analytical inquiry and following the insight into suffering. This insight, is it referring to just um, a, a wisdom that you, you realize through meditation or is it just through reflection? Um, it is the, the wisdom, wisdom of the study and wisdom of reflection into impermanence. Just impermanence only? No, not necessarily impermanence, impermanence, suffering, the truth of suffering. We discussed that there are 16 aspects. Four noble truths can be further classified into 16 aspects. Each of the no noble truths with four aspects each. So the first one, suffering, has four aspects. Impermanence, suffering, emptiness, selflessness, four. So any of these four. Okay. And not only the suffering, not only suffering, also the cause of suffering, again four. Cessation four, then the, uh, the path four, yes. Analysis into any of these 16. Analysis into the 16, better. So one examines the nature of the cause of suffering. That um, is our wisdom, yes. Is, um, just now um, I'm discussing with my mother, is it just, um, because you are saying that uh, it's the wisdom, uh, re wisdom on... Wisdom of emptiness. Emptiness. Wisdom of selflessness. Okay, so why doesn't the stanza just say one examines the causes of suffering? Is there a difference between uh, like this in, in, okay, in this putting good it, question, the nature very good of the, suffer, the causes is of suffering? The, the why not? It directly says insight into the, let's say the cause of suffering, rather insight into the suffering, insight into the impermanence and so forth. So practically speaking, so theory and the practical too. Theory and the practical, same, the, the map, blueprint, the road map, and the actual field work, too. Road map is very simple. Okay, from here, you go to KL, from KL, you go to Singapore. You go to KL, okay, I already reached KL, then what should I do now, right? You have to go to the airport. <laughs> Right? KL, you did not say uh, from KL go to airport. You do, KL from KL, you do go to the, the bus station or the taxi station. We do not say this. Just say KL. This is the roadmap. Very roadmap. Find the wisdom of emptiness. But practically speaking, anybody who is to meditate on wisdom of emptiness, they have to meditate on impermanence, suffering, all these things. Practically, we have to meditate on all. Without which, what we said earlier, even for meditation or impermanence, there should be enormous amount of accumulation merit. Merit accumulation is through reflecting on bodhicitta and all other aspects, and also prostrations and so forth there. Okay, yes. Janet, Janet, yes, Mike? Then I thought the meditation part will come on the later stanza, which is on uh, stanza 136. That's, yes. That's what the, the how you practice, I mean like the... So that is the final, That's of the, all the meditations, what's the, the finale? The final is the wisdom of emptiness, which is directly in opposition with this self-grasping ignorance, which in turn gave rise to the attachment, right? So that is the final answer. So before that, before we actually reach there in a very successful way, we have to meditate on the, all the other things. Okay, Mon. Just, just to uh, uh, add on to this, because I thought the, we were discussing stanza 134 oh. and line 3, realizing the nature of the cause of suffering. 
Uh -huh. And I think Janet has a question on what's the difference between just say realizing the cause of suffering versus realizing the nature of the cause of suffering. Okay, that's a very interesting question. Realizing the nature of the cause of suffering. If you could remember early morning practice, we always talk about okay, so the the gold mixed with the soil, our Buddha nature mixed with the metal defilements. To eradicate the metal defilements, we need to know the nature of the metal defilements. You remember? We are seeing this. Which means what exactly what do you understand by what do you mean by metal defilements? When we say this, you are looking for the nature of the metal defilements. When you say, oh, what, is the, what is the nature of, what is the nature of Tashi, what is the nature of the, what is the nature of Alex, right? What is, what is, what is, what is Alex? What is the nature of Alex? So when we really explore into Alex, we explore into the nature of the Alex. It's the same. If, if you, ideally, it's the same. Yeah, same. Okay, now, okay, maybe the last question. Alex, who's holding the mic? Um, in our group, we were talking about how self-grasping ignorance is due to the misapprehension of the mind of, on the object. So I was trying to, I, I would like to ask, under what circumstances would there be this misapprehension, and which of the five omnipresent mental factors contribute to this misapprehension? All, all. as I said earlier, the same mind. Same mind functions in all ways, all the five. Same mind functions have the five different functions. Same mind has the five different functions, right? Some people, they say that I work in, I work in the hospital. I work in the hospital, government hospital. I also work in my private clinic. I also work in my friend's clinic, right? So three, there are three, there are three different jobs. Who's doing it? Same person is doing it. Likewise, same person, same mind is operating or having all these five functions. Then, within this, through this, then the misperception. Misperception is typically the discrimination, wrong discrimination. Of the five, wrong discrimination, this is a misperception. Okay, we stop here.